Hello, welcome. Today we are here to have a uh, series of lectures about molecular imaging of prostate cancer. My name is Ephraim Parent. I'm a radiologist at Mayo Clinic. And the lecture today will be on the bone imaging aspect of prostate cancer. This short lecture will cover uh, a few topics, principally the role of bone imaging or skeletal imaging of prostate cancer and cover the common ways we do planar and then more advanced 3D imaging and how this applies to how your physician will be using this information to treat and manage your prostate cancer. So to start off with, we're going to talk about the goals of imaging, and these are pretty much only two things why we do this. One, we want to identify if there is in fact any evidence of metastatic prostate cancer to the skeleton and how much of it there is. And then the second part is related to that, but it involves subsequent therapies, there's subsequent images to where we can evaluate the effectiveness of the therapy that, that your physician might have placed you on. So why do we get a bone scan? So bone is often the primary site or may also be the only site of metastatic disease in patients with prostate cancer. And the bone scintigraphy or this kind of planar imaging provides a total skeletal survey, which has relatively low cost and it has a high sensitivity and is a fairly easy and reproducible study that um, is commonly used for most patients that have uh, prostate cancer and especially if they have suspicion for metastatic disease. And there's two main radiopharmaceuticals or molecular imaging agents which we use in nuclear medicine to identify for osseous metastatic disease. The first one is uh, technetium 99M MDP or methylene diphosphonate. And the other one is a very similar agent that works very similarly, but it's a, it's a different type of technology of what we use. It's called sodium chloride, and that's a PET study. We'll be talking about both of these, but these are both very commonly used as a marker um, of bone metastatic disease. So this is a planar image uh, on the right of a patient um, with prostate cancer. And there's not really anything here that would suggest this person has prostate cancer in this, of metastatic disease in the skeleton, at least. Um, this is a relatively normal looking study. I have highlighted uh, an area that I'm pointing to with the uh, red arrow that has uh, what you see on these kind of anterior and posterior images. And that's where the site was injected, but that dot if it was other places in the skeleton, that would be very typical of what we would see with somebody with prostate cancer, where we have areas of uptake correspond to increased um, blood flow and other things that we see with prostate cancer. And it's a very, it's a very good marker for disease. This is uh, two patients that we have uh, seen with uh, prostate cancer, um, different type of pattern that we see. The first patient on the left has what we'd call oligometastatic osseous disease, meaning that there are several areas, but it's not extensive throughout. I've identified a few areas here, such as along the right clavicle and in the spine, where you see increased uptake of this tracer. And this is our areas that we would expect to see prostate cancer. The other patient on the right, we don't really see any focal lesions, but what we see is there's this kind of nodular appearance throughout the skeleton. And in fact, this patient has what we refer to uh, colloquially as a super scan, where there's so much activity through and so much disease through the skeleton that things kind of become confluent. And we, and we say kind of there's this extensive disease where you're no longer able to identify individual lesions. But these are kind of both clinical presentations that we see often. To evaluate how we identify the effectiveness of treatment, we can take serial time points and understand how the disease in the skeleton is either getting worse or better over time. These are three images of the same patient over different time points in the course of therapy. On the image on the left, we have a few areas of increased uptake suggestive of osseous metastatic disease involving the right humeral head, skeleton, and several ribs. And Underneath it, I've indicated the patient's PSA, which is often a marker, a lab marker that uh, we can use to identify how much disease is kind of circulating in the body. The next image, the center image, is where we see that the PSA has gone up, but he now also has extensive disease, including those same areas, but now throughout the spine, multiple ribs kind of have this nodular appearance, which implies that there's much disease through them 
and also increasing uptake in that right humeral head. Therapy has changed, and on the last image we see at this time point, the PSA has gone down. And as well as much of the disease in the spine and ribs has gone down, but that right humeral head actually has increased uptake. All of these findings are suggestive that while he's overall responding favorably to disease, there is a mixed pattern of uptake, suggestive that there's perhaps some areas of worsening disease. And the point of this is to show that we get a sense of these things changing over time, which can help the treating physician know how best to treat and maintain management for the patient. Now, what I've been showing you is it's more of a visual assessment, but there are ways that we can get more accurate measurements that can be more precise as to the extent of disease and again, how it's responding over time. And this is where we take these kind of planar images, which we have been showing you and turn them into a 3D image. So on this patient on the, that I'm showing here with both the anterior and posterior views, we see some uptake here on a rib and as well as some uptake in the pelvis. Well, what we want to be able to do with our 3D or cross-sectional imaging is to not just identify, but to quantify how much disease is in these sites. And so the same patient, we've now I'm showing you a sodium fluoride PET CT, where we have uptake here on that hip, and you can see the sclerotic lesion that I've indicated with arrows, and there's some uptake there. And over time, we can take the same patient, this is the same patient that we were just seeing, and evaluate this uptake and we can get an actual number and compare that over time to see how the treatment is affecting. So where before the we had an SUV or which is kind of a metric to evaluate how much radio tracer is going to this metastatic lesion, we can then also measure it again after therapy and we see this gone down, suggesting that these uh, the treatment that the patient's on is successful. And it's overall these kind of multiple time markers that we can use to be able to identify um, not only the extent of disease, but again, if the patient is responding favorably to treatment and if there's a change in management needed. Occasionally, we will use other types of molecular imaging, such as a fusiclovine or PSMA study, that can help, in addition to the bone imaging, understand true disease. There's no one study that's perfect for everything, but we can often use both of these, the combination, to identify whether or not there is a true disease. For example, this patient on the left had a fusiclovine or aximan PET-CT, which is used for uh, also for prostate cancer. And there is a lesion of uptake or an area of uptake in that left iliac bone that's identified on both the cross-sectional and the kind of coronal imaging there, as indicated by the arrow. We did another study um, on sodium fluoride to evaluate whether or not this area was real. And there was no uptake in this area suggesting that this was in fact a false positive study. And it, it should be known that often it is a multiple types of studies that are used to get a full and complete picture of the extent of metastatic disease in a patient. So to conclude, typically planar bone scintigraphy is used to identify and manage prostate cancer. Occasionally your physician or the nuclear radiologist will be using cross-sectional imaging to not only be more accurate in the extent of disease, but able to truly quantify the extent of uptake and be able to provide tools to the treating physician to uh, most appropriately manage therapy. And I'd like to uh, thank the entire prostate cancer uh, working group at the SNMMI um, for their help in putting these series together. Thank you.